We're back here with DT Daily. Uh, hello, everyone. Thanks for tuning in again live across all kinds of social media platforms. And we are joined now by Mr. Ian Williams. Ian, uh, your beard does look good now Thank that we're you, on man. camera. Thank you. I can see. People always ask me if this gray is fake. <laughs> is yeah. it? No. No. Yeah, you right. didn't like, no, die, like four strands. This is four earned. Strands. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> nah. <laughs> this, is called, this is called years. Yeah. <laughs> it's called hard work. Yeah. That's what it is. You earned that. Well, Ian, so you are the owner of Deadstock Coffee, yep. which we're going to talk about here in just a little bit, because I have questions about a couple of the brews that I saw that, are, that, are, that you guys have down there. Um, but before we get to that, let's talk about you being a Nike shoe designer. Mm. Like you were a Nike shoe designer, but I want to get briefly for everybody. I'm sure you've told the story a million times, but for everyone watching. A couple times. How, yeah, I'm sure, yeah, no one's ever asked you. How, you started off as a janitor at Nike. Yeah. And then worked your way up to be a shoe designer. Yeah. Like, this sounds like some uh, kind of, like, Goodwill hunting kind yeah. of thing. Like, yeah. Like, you're, you're no, there you're not after the hours, like, drying a shoe design. Yeah, I'm no. sure not. Um, how did that happen? Um, yeah, so uh, I started at Nike actually at retail. I was at the employee store. Uh, I had little odd jobs leading up to that. Um, Worked at, like, I detailed cars because I liked cars. I just wanted to drive Escalades all day, stuff like that. <laughs> nice. But I realized in these odd jobs I was spending my money buying shoes. Uh -huh. And after a while I was like, man, why don't I just get paid to wear shoes from a shoe company? You know? Right. Maybe I'll even get some for free. Um, so I started at retail. After retail, I worked at IHM where they make the airbags next door to the employee store. And, and then after, the airbags for the shoes? Yeah, like the air, like the heel. Maybe we'll get into some airbags in a second. Okay. Um, Sorry, I didn't want to Yeah, it, No, it's all right. It's good. All it's right. Good. I'll um, let you leave. Uh, and then... Uh, <laughs> But then after that, you know, I realized I wasn't going to get discovered there because it was a manufacturing job, like, yeah. you know, 12-hour shifts and Friday, Saturday, Sunday, every other Monday, missing right. all my homies. Um, I was like, man, I just need to be seen more. So the best place I could think of that was to, uh, was to be, like, near people every single day. Mm -hmm. People need to see me every day. So the, the right. best thing yeah, I could think of was a janitor because mm -hmm. you're going to see me every day. Yeah. Uh, you know, right after. And it's right when people are the most vulnerable. They're ready to go home. They don't really want to be at work. So I would talk to them about things that had nothing to do with work. Um, smart. Yeah. That so I was like, talk about family, yeah. talk about shoes, mm -hmm. basketball, whatever. So that when I did interview for that job, you're not giving, you're not looking for a random person, or you're not giving a random person a job. You're giving your friend Ian a job. Right. You're the so, guy that they've been talking to. Yeah. 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 So, so um, during that time, I uh, actually uh, had the opportunity to work on a skate shoe uh, with Nike SB. Uh, it was inspired by my day job or my night job um, uh, as a janitor. It was an all yellow dunk high, inspired by the wet floor sign. That's um, awesome. And then uh, after that, I realized, like, man, I just needed to be, I needed to be there even more. So I gave myself a desk in a back hallway. Um, like and you I just pulled just, out a desk and. I had a, I have a friend, <laughs> I have my friend BK. Shout out Bruce. Uh, uh, I have a friend Bruce, and he was like, he was an admin at the time, and he gave me this space. Uh, he was like, hey, this is where the interns sit in the summer. Yeah. Can go ahead and post up there. Um, and so I sat there for, I don't know, about nine months. And I just came in in the morning and pretended like I was supposed to be, like I was a regular employee. <laughs> I love that. I was teaching that myself awesome. Illustrator and Photoshop. And then uh, I did all sorts of work. Um, that, that's actually the only shoe I ever really designed. Because uh, mm -hmm. after that, uh, I had the opportunity to move into footwear. And I was a developer. So I was like an engineer. Okay. So yeah. actually figuring out how to make the design work. Exactly. Like functional. Yes. Dang. That is exactly what I did. I respect that yeah. work that you put in to do that. I mean, that's, that's smart, like all the way through it. It's dumb. I mean, yeah, but it worked. <laughs> it worked. That's the thing. That's the yeah. bottom line. I mean, you know, it's, it's kind of like that entire model, fake it till you make it. I mean, yep. That's pretty much it. That is exactly what I was it. doing. Nice work. Yeah, well, thank you. Still doing that. Well, let's see. <laughs> yeah, right? Well, let's see uh, one of the designs here. Oh, yeah. So, yeah, so, have, this, so. Is actually, this is actually a shoe uh, that just recently came out. I have nothing to do with it. Okay, you didn't uh, have anything to do with it. And it's kind of cool because for a long time I knew everything about what was coming out, and then uh -huh. now I'm like, I'm discovering it as a consumer again, which is now really you get cool. to be, yeah, back I to get, like being. I a get fan to be the geek, yeah, yeah, you know. Uh, so this is uh, this is the LeBron 16. Uh, shout out to the homies that do the LeBron um, back at Nike. You know, fortunately, oh, a lot of these people are my homies. Uh, you know, a little official unboxing. Wow, for the streets. Um, you know, as, as in a true unboxing, uh, there's there's not very much in excitement in the box. <laughs> right. Yeah. Usually the paper's printed or something. I wish that had happened, but that's okay. <laughs> um, you know, I'm going to let it go. Yeah. Um, but, so but yeah, so this is the, so yeah, yeah call, call someone. <laughs> so uh, here's the 16. Um, they actually dropped this new, uh, on the last, six, on the last, on the 15, the previous shoe, mm -hmm. uh, Nike had started doing this, uh, this full length Zoom bag, which essentially, they call a full length uh, Zoom bag. So the difference between Max Air and Zoom Air, mm -hmm. Max Air is uh, is like a big bubble, and then they put posts in it. So you can see okay. like, these little, you can see these little like yep these posts. And it's to keep the bag. If you don't put a post in it, the bag will blow up like a balloon, right? Right. Um, uh, 
and it also helps to support the weight and everything of like the person and the in the force, like the G forces okay. and all that stuff. The shear, shear is like when you move side to side. Um, okay. But then uh, the Zoom Air has is like the airbag, but instead of putting posts, they use fil or uh, like filament. Like oh really? Little, like a little string. So okay. you can see like the, the little strings. Oh yeah, there, right? it's a bunch of little strings. Yeah. I know this is probably so, hard to see in the camera. Yeah, but you know, you get, get up in there. Yeah, there we go. You see some little you see little white strings in there? Yeah. So a whole uh, bunch of little strings. Yeah. So so they call this a a, a, zoo, a max zoom bag. Uh -huh. Um but really technically it's just a max bag. You can't have you can't have both. Okay. Um but what what this allows you to do is get a very low profile um Air Max bag, mm -hmm. which is uh, which is better for like if you're too tall, right? Uh, and you're not moving around, yeah. You yeah. you get a hot, you get ankle sprains. Okay. Um, but but yeah, uh, that's cool. And this, so this, this, this is, bag is really I mean, I can tell for. how excited you are. Yeah, yeah. You know, talking about just the design of it. I mean, yeah. Working in that. Yeah. Um, on the on the like for when it comes to design like this, how much of it is influenced by, um, by what's seen online, like by the internet, by yeah. technology? How much uh, does that internet well like influence? You know, I. I'm, I'm not really I'm not really too sure sometimes yeah. you know some designers they go a little crazy and mm -hmm. you know of course you're, you're pulling a lot of information from the internet right and, and uh, when you're working with an athlete like LeBron uh -huh. you know LeBron is constantly doing a million things right so he's right. going like a school he's in LA now uh, you know his son is about to be in the league soon right so there's like so many things and like the the internet is definitely influencing because of you know memes and music and yeah. all that stuff so the the cues and the information the, the small details are often inspired by things that, that both the athlete and the designers and the, and the creative team see online. Um, because the, the internet is at our fingertips at all times, right? Yeah. I mean, we're online right now. Right, yeah, exactly. So, yeah, we're, we're broadcasting right <laughs> you now. You know, so shout out, what up, and I'm sure this blazer is influencing shoes. Oh, yeah, somewhere. it is, I mean, right? We got colorway coming soon. Yeah, I mean, yeah. It, you know, it's obviously <laughs> going to be happening. Yeah. Um, well, that's, that's really interesting. I mean, it's, and it's, it's pretty a good, good shoe. for you. Yeah, it looks like a solid shoe. Yeah. I mean, it's a well made shoe, actually. It does look like Womage. Yeah. I'll give you that. Well, I mean, you you know because you can obviously tell the difference when it comes down to that. Good job, yeah. squad. Yeah. yeah. He's, giving, he's yeah. giving a shout out right there. All right. Well, let's talk about this. So you went from from working at Nike, yeah. you know, designing shoes. Then how how do you go from there to owning a coffee shop, Dead Stop Coffee? Uh, I just opened it. So yep, you just decided that, like I'm gonna get into coffee now. Yep. <laughs> that's, that's pretty much it. I, no, do, I do you uh, like coffee. I you know coffee's cool. Yeah, it's all right. It's cool. Um, no, I I was uh, <laughs> I, what I really wanted was uh, what I loved about the sneaker culture was uh -huh. the was the community piece. Yeah. So um, you know, just like seeing everybody, people from all walks of life, mm -hmm. all come together over this silly thing. Yeah. You know, which is like these weird foot coverings with like rubber on the bottom. Right. And, you know, whatever happens on the top, leather or you know this uh, this new this new nip, uh, and we're all just like really chasing this thing down. But it uh -huh. could be a plumber, a doctor. Uh, a child, somebody who was like nostalgia. All these things could all bring you together, um, and that was really what I missed about the yeah. sneaker, of what from working behind the desk. Like that right? sense of community. Yeah. So I, you know, after that, I was just like, I was literally on on a ThinkPad, just like <laughs> typing numbers, saving the company tons of money. And I was like, you know what? I just want the community back. Yeah. So that that's really uh, coffee shops are pulsing the community. Yeah, absolutely. And, and Portland is the sneaker capital of the world it is yeah like, there was you didn't no know, evidence I mean, yeah. like everybody's here yeah nike yeah. adidas under armor uh keen columbia all the companies that work with all those companies like widen and kennedy camp grizzly like all the agencies a lot of designers yeah. a lot of so it's all a lot of it is here in portland just here and then in boston right so um and you know some of the companies in boston are owned by nike so right yeah totally you know, and, and, and adidas so. so you combine that like sensibility for it and then with your coffee shop i did want to ask about a uh, couple of couple of the coffees they have. You have one called uh, the LeBronald Palmer. Yeah, you did it. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. LeBronald right. Palmer. I know. I was like, ah, I almost <laughs> said it. stumble on it. But what's a, what's a LeBronald Palmer? You know, it's inspired by you know one of the greatest basketball players of all time. Not the greatest. That's Allen Iverson. You know, shout out V. A. Uh, <laughs> Clyde, that's cool. You can be wrong. It's cool. It's your show. Uh, but uh, it, it's a supposedly LeBron's favorite drink is the Arnold Palmer. Okay. Um, and so we. Took the Arnold Palmer and juiced it up. Okay. You know and gave gave it some gave it some some power. Some kick. And added some coffee. Okay. Uh, so it's really just a it's coffee, sweet tea, and lemonade. It's like a true Southern sweet tea. Actually, I would drink that. That sounds pretty good. Yeah. That you know what? If good. I see you again on the show, okay. Drink a baby Bron Bronze. I got you. All right. As long as I don't have to call it a baby Bron Bronze. You call it whatever you want. <laughs> All right. The other one. 
Okay, green coffee, it's called the Charged Up, and I know we oh, gotta yeah. wrap up here for a second, but green coffee uh, with green flavored Kool-Aid. Yeah. Yeah, we, you know, we switched it up now. I just wanted to see if I could. Do you uh, brew it with the Kool Aid, or I can't tell you. But okay, I just, I just wanted to Trade see secrets. if it was, if it was possible to make a coffee beverage with Kool Aid. I tried it for a couple uh -huh. of years, uh, and I kept using brewed coffee, and it just kept tasting like Robitussin. Yeah, I was gonna and say it was it terrible. Doesn't, doesn't seem like it would taste good. Yeah, but it's interesting enough. I want to try it. Yeah, maybe you know, maybe bring some charges up next time too. So we All use right. the green coffee before we roast it, make a cold brew. And then, uh, and we actually use tea now because we learned that instead uh, of Kool Aid, instead of Kool Aid, okay. trying to make it a little more healthy. You know, it's Portland, yeah. right? You know, so we got kids out here. Yeah, you know, we, we got to do the we got to do the right thing. Yeah. We just we just add natural food coloring. Make All right. Food. Awesome. Well, in, dude, your whole life is just fascinating. Clearly, there's going to be a movie. I just do stuff. That's going to be a movie man. about you at some point. I just point. be doing I stuff. I can tell already. Yeah. Well, uh, thank the you so good much. Good Williams hunting. <laughs> yes. Ex <laughs> Boom. There it is. So, attention Hollywood. We've got the star right here. Uh, all right. Well, Ian, thank you so much for joining us. How can people follow you? Like, oh, yeah, man. You know, uh, at Death.Coffee on Instagram, Death.Coffee.com. Uh, we're right down the street from Digital Trend Studio in Portland, 408 Northwest Coot Street. Come see us. Get your baby Bron Bron or LeBron <laughs> Palmer or whatever you want. We got it all. It's all there. Except for blended drinks. We don't do that. Or pour overs. Okay. Yeah. So don't ask for that. Just yeah. don't even bother. Don't all ask. Right. Yeah. Well, Ian, thank you so much for joining us, man. Yeah, this man. Is awesome.